The History of Black Writing, HBW, is a research unit in the Department of English within the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences at the University of Kansas. Established in 1983, HBW has been in the forefront of black literary recovery work, digital humanities, and public literacy programming. In 2017, Dr. Aisha Hardison and Dr. Randall Jelks organized Black Love, a symposium at the University of Kansas to celebrate the 80th anniversary of Zora Neale Hurston's novel, Their Eyes Were Watching God. The symposium, which included movie showings, discussion panels, and a public reading of the novel, also launched the Soul of Zora exhibition curated by Marla Jackson. A self-taught fiber artist and author, Jackson brought together 14 quote artists to celebrate the writing and life of Hurston in The Soul of Zora. My name is Marla Arne Jackson. I'm an artist, author, executive director of Marla Quilts Inc., the founder of the National African American Quilt Convention, also Underground Railroad, Network to Freedom, the National Park Service. I'm an actual site of living history. What was your process in curating the Soul of Zora exhibition? I wanted to uh, honor, you know, my word, because I told uh, Chancellor Hemingway that I will have an exhibition. And so I said, well, this is the time to, to have this exhibition. So I contacted a lot of my friends and other artists and put a, I put a call out and uh, for, for my exhibition of the Soul of Zora. And then I got an email from um, Dr. Harding and said, would you like to participate in the love, you know, the love, um, it was a love show? Black, love. black, black love. And so it's sort of like, what do I do with these extra quilts that really pertain to Zora, but just love, you know? And so I had to decide what to do. I'll let everybody be a part of that, you know? And then I decided we need to separate this exhibition. We need to pull out what pertains to Zora. And so I did that. And you guys had a great symposium and on the black love. You had several people come and interview. And then it was just like icing on the cake to have this great reception combined. And it just, it fit perfect for me, you know. And so I was excited about that. And because it just led to other opportunities for us. In this interview with HBW, Jackson discusses her work's connection to Hurston and the technical processes of quilt making at the National African American Quilt Museum and Textile Academy, located in Lawrence, Kansas. How do you develop concepts or creative ideas for your craft projects and exhibits? I research everything and I visualize and the I concepts are are made during my sleep process, you know, and how I feel about, you know, I have, um, I'm hypersensitive, so I have like colors and things like that, you know, like the, the um, quilt behind us represents, it's called uh, ascension. My mother has dementia, but that's her, you know, always holding your head up no matter what, so, uh, the process is very different for me, you know, it's, it's everything. This is the way I write. It's, you know, I have a, a disability, so you may not understand my writing, but you'll get the point in the process of my artwork. It's my voice. What does the technical process of making your quilts look like? What I do, I start from a, 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 a photocopy of the person and then I um, start laying the fabrics. To be real honest with you, I don't know uh, the color wheel spectrum. I don't know what colors go together. I feel them and so I take the fabric, you know, and I look at it and I place it. I use glue. I use glue. I use toothpicks. I uh, you know, develop just different process. Like for an example, when I made, is Ma Rainey's quilt? No, she's not up. I hurt her mouth, you know, what I did. 
I cut the back of the mouth out, completely out, and I took uh, quilt batting, and I took fabric from the back and rolled her lips into this. And then, from the opening, I took fabric from the behind with white cotton, and I put more batting, and I made her teeth. You know, and I used sequins, because she had gold in her mouth. You know, her every tooth, tooth had gold, and I used gold sequins with her. And so it's a real, there she is back there, it's a real process, she's back on the wall there. But, uh, and I use colors because, you know, I always say black people come in all shades, and I notice whenever I do my art, I make black people, I use black fabric. My mother always used black fabric, so, and we come in all shades, all shades of color. So we just can't just take a color and say every black person is this color. So I use color, you know. I use color in my faces. I, mean, I love eyes. You know, I can, I, I, I like to make the forms. I want to make it three-dimensional. Three-dimensional. I want to bring it to life. But I do, I do other things, you know, I do collages, you know, I, I do, but my quilts, I just love the portraits, you know, the people. How has Zora Neale Hurston influenced you as a storyteller? I tell you, what really influenced me was uh, Robert, the Chancellor Robert, Robert Hemingway. And Mary, Dr. Mary McGram took me to visit him, and we had not without we had the quilt not without laughter. I gifted that quilt to Dr. Mary Emma, and we had it, and we had made an appointment, and he was on the floor, crawling around on the floor, looking at my quilts. He said, "Mary Emma, I know you got that checkbook out. I know you're trying to get money. <laughs> I know, I know." He said he was on his knees, and he, you know, and. I would say, and I met him again over to Merriman's when I was invited and just got to know him. And one day, I got an email from Robert Hemingway, the chancellor. He said, Marla Jackson, you got the soul of Zora Neale Hurston. He said, don't add, he says, because I know. I know. And so, I went on this quest and uh, I researched Zora back in the 80s and I started making the quilt, not without laughter, but I stopped and uh, don't know why I stopped, but I did. But I went to visit there, went down to uh, Fort Pierce, got to meet people in the community, got to go to her home and heard her. It was the anthropology, the linguistics. And with my language, my language, there's certain words I cannot pronounce because of my disability, but I understand it, and I, I understand it in a poetic, poetic way. And I was telling Mary Emma, you know, when Zora got to New York, how did uh, they treat her? The way she spoke and the way she carried herself. She didn't give one damn. She's like me, and I don't give one damn what people think. But Zora Neale Hurston lived her life. She lived, and every ability she had, she utilized it. And can't, no, one, no one could tell her what she couldn't do. No one could tell me what I can do. I can do it all. Just show me. So I see Zora as in my soul, in Burns, I see myself. And more and more I research Zora Neale Hurston, I can see where Robert Hemingway So I had the soul of Zora. What does quilt making say about the black American experience? This is sacred for us. I think most importantly it was a way for us to use vocabulary. I call it visual literacy, you know, you talked about, uh, you know, people ask me all the time, are they really quilt blocks that, you know, the, pretty much directed the slaves? And my answer is, I don't know. You know, a lot of, I mean, there has not been any written documentation that this was actually true. But there's a lot of things growing up, in my, growing up myself, 
are things that a lot of people don't know about that what we do. So I just think it's the foundation of our life because when you think about the cotton and you know the different trials and tribulations we've gone through, you know, just mention the word cotton, you know, and the fiber. So it's a very, very sensitive to us. Why is it important for future generations to learn this craft? Because take a person like me, not the inability to really write, but I can tell you exactly what I'm talking about. I said, don't let me quilt you. Don't let us marry, I tell Miriam, <laughs> don't let me quilt you, girl. <laughs> she said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but it's just, it, it, it takes you to the highest level because you're dealing with your soul and the spirit, you know, and that art form. And it's like, I don't know how I'm able, who taught me this? Nobody. I never had a quilt class. I couldn't, I, could, I couldn't do the traditional quilting, you know, the way people do it, but I teach these kids because I want them to know. While you're in school and you don't have no money, you better be making some images. You better be printing some t-shirts. Feed yourself.